So let's talk about that Witch Queen reveal. Holy moly, was that impressive from Bungie. They even blew my expectations out the water. Now, there is some things that we didn't get that I was hoping for, and it's a little bit of a bummer, but they replaced it with other stuff regarding locations and other things. But we're going to be focusing on the Witch Queen reveal and beyond a little bit, as well as the end of Season of Lost, because we did get some word on what's going on with the 30th anniversary event going on for Bungie, which is an awesome event. There is one thing I have a critique about, but again, it won't be a problem for me. It's going to be a problem for other people. But let's jump into some stuff with the Witch Queen. Now, Savathun has made a reveal, and uh, she looks impressive. Her location is impressive as well. Now, this isn't Old Chicago, but this is Savathun's throne world. I'm guessing they're going to kind of go for that Leviathan feel of how Oryx had his ship with the Taken King. And now we have uh, Savathun's throne world. The possibilities here are endless. It looks impressive. It looks beautiful. It looks stunning. And I cannot wait to get in there. Now, where the hell this is? Don't know. It's probably going to have to take a little portal to get there or stuff like that we'll see i'm sure that they're going to explain something in the seasonal loss with the ending event and things in that nature but it looks impressive and even more impressive is the idea of hive guardians now if you guys are confused what's going on with this well savathun has taken our greatest ally and turned it against us the light now we don't know how she's done that we will probably assume that we're going to see something of that in the season of the lost ex season this year or this season you know this is the tale of two queens as they said and uh it is shocking what we are going to be doing now another thing to keep in mind is that we are getting a new weapon archetype it's crazy we're getting hive guardians that are using our light based subclasses against us we're getting a new weapon archetype and this weapon archetype actually looks pretty cool it's a first person melee weapon it has projectile capabilities which mid-range they described has melee capabilities and it has a defensive capabilities of a shield it's an interesting concept and i like the idea of a lot of introducing a new weapon archetype i actually gave up on new weapon archetypes for a little bit because i just didn't think they were going to do it. it seems like death bungie wasn't really adding anything new weapon archetypes really at all since forsaken so i mean again i'm a little shocked but hey it is what it is and i'm enjoying that now another thing we are getting that i did not expect at all was weapon crafting now weapon crafting is even more direct than umbral engrams i'm curious if they're going to remove the umbral engram system i would assume so because this is even better and more direct and it replaces it so don't know what that's going to be about there but again the idea of creating more direct ways to grind for things is always welcomed rng is a great surprise factor you know i love when i got my vex mental class and d1 and all these other things but more direct is better for the community and this system is looking pretty awesome what's even better is that like you can craft raid weapons now i'm assuming there's locks and there's certain currencies that you have to get from certain activities in order to craft those weapons so you can't you know craft raid weapons without spoils of conquest or anything like that you need raid currency you can only get from playing the raid so there is that but again weapon crafting is great and i'm loving that another thing we are getting with the witch queen is aspects and fragments and more are coming to the light subclasses so what the stasis effect of customization seems to be shifting over to light based subclasses now first we're going to be focusing on the void subclass and then each season they're going to be evolving each subclass and focusing on a subclass and adding stuff and this is just great it makes you know light subclasses more reliable it gives them that customization that they desire that stasis offers one of the reasons why i think stasis was always so powerful in general and more used was because it wasn't just powerful it was just more player customization and that always will be better than a tree system now we have to see what they do with the tree system i'm assuming they're going to wipe it but they didn't showcase it's just announced that we are going to get this system in play we also got word of a new expansion not the new expansion but this expansion after lightfall we got a title for it we got a title for it and it seems like lightfall is also sticking with its name which is great i love that name but the final shape this is the final chapter of this story, and it's not the end of Destiny 2, like they said. This is the closing of the Stark Light and Darkness saga, and Final Shape will be the last chapter of that, but Destiny 2 will continue on and be for beyond, you know, whatever, which I think is great. I love Destiny. It's great to hear that they're continuing the narrative, and they're going to be going to a new place, and this is a big climactic conclusion, which is awesome. I'm nervous that we're going to lose some people, including Zavala, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really seeing, looking forward to seeing what happens. And it's great that we're getting more details of what's in the future for Destiny, which is always welcome. Now, let's talk about the 30th anniversary event and pack. Now, the event is free for all, and I think it's great. The pack, however, is a paid thing, which I have a little bit of issues with because, again, not everybody can get this. And there's a new pirate-themed dungeon. There's a Thorn-inspired armor set, Bungie-themed ornaments and cosmetics. You know, there's a Claymore sword from Myth and more, and there's also a return of the Galahorn. So these are a lot of things that are locked in within this pack that you have to buy. 
I'm going to get this pack, obviously, but again, it's a little unfortunate. I wish they did the dungeon update for free, but I guess they have to make up some money because of the shift in the row maps. I, I get it. This is business at the end of the day. I'm going to be paying for it, and a lot of hardcore people will be paying for this. It's just a little surprising, a little unfortunate, and I got to be fair in critiquing that. But again, a new dungeon later in the season coming in December, I think it's great. I mentioned in a video that I made before that I wanted a little bit more time-gated stuff. Expand this season and create a thing in play where we are definitely coming in week by week because this is uh, again going to be a long season we have until february 22nd until this witch queen comes out so seasonal loss will be long and i'm excited for it but again time gaining some stuff will definitely be welcomed here in this case but yeah pretty much there's a lot of things going on the gallahorn's coming back which i think is great Galhorn was actually my first exotic I have ever unlocked in Destiny 1. Funny story. And I didn't find out I have had it until the Crota raid. I was, it's a funny story. I, um, basically I was just playing and we couldn't do the raid. And like, oh man, we wish I had Galahorn. Oh wait, that's what it said called? The, the Galahorn? I thought it was like the Yalahorn or whatever. He's like, wait, you have that? I was like, yeah, I have this. I never ranked it up. He's like, you fucking idiot. It was a great story. Destiny has some great moments. It rains. It's great. But yeah, there's a lot of great stuff in this. I'm excited for this year, Destiny. The Witch Queen's going to look remarkable, and the build-up to that is also looking remarkable. Now, we didn't cover no seasonal loss stuff in this video because, again, we're going to be expanding upon that and talking about that in my reaction video when we get hands-on and launch into the game. But yeah, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for Season Lost. And uh, yeah, this video is coming out after that reaction. So somewhere here on the annotation, there should be my reaction to that season. You guys check it out if you guys want to hear my first reactions or just experience the opening of the season. Let's say you guys are at work and you can't really do it yourself. But yeah, Destiny's looking great. Bungie's killing it with this game. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, definitely drop this video a like. And if you guys are new here and want more content from me, because we got a ton of stuff. New season, a build up to the Witch Queen. We got a lot of stuff planned. Definitely hit that subscribe button because we are going to be going hard with Destiny as well as going hard with other games coming out, whether it's Battlefield, Call of Duty Warzone, and Vanguard, obviously, and other stuff like Halo Infinite. We are going to be going hard with a bunch of different games. So if you guys do not want to miss that content from me, definitely hit that subscribe button. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for this one. I'm out of breath. Shout out to you here, and I'm out.